Hello everyone, today I'm going to be seeing what ChatGPT can do in terms of writing us an After Effects script. Now, if you're not familiar, ChatGTP is this new AI or machine learning, as it should be called, a tool that came out where once you log in, you have the ability to type in whatever you want. With ChatGPT, you can basically ask it to explain just about anything that has been trained on. So you can ask it how to uh, describe something in scientific terms, how to write an essay on a certain subject, and even how to write code. And a lot of people have been using it as a coding utility, which will basically allow you to either get started or understand the concepts of something in coding. Now, obviously, it's not all perfect. A lot of times it gives you kind of close responses, but not quite there. So today I just want to take a look at what it can do in terms of AE scripting, how far off it is, uh, what things it gets right, and if ChatGTP really is the future. And of course, before I do get started, just want to remind you down below all the links to GitHub where I'll be posting the code. Uh, follow us there, follow us on Instagram, join the channel as a subscriber or a member if you'd like, and let's go ahead and jump right in. So I'm going to go ahead and start by just saying, write me an After Effects script. And what do we want the script to do? Uh, that generates... 100 randomly colored square solid layers. And now once we hit enter, it should start to uh, try and figure it out. And of course, uh, you do need a, an account for this, but it is free uh, once you are once you have an account and log into chat.openai.com. So as you can see here, we start off where it's adding a composition. That's good. It's defining an array of colors to choose from. Also very interesting. I wouldn't necessarily do it that way myself, but it's an interesting thought. In my way of doing it would be to randomize the RGB and values each time. So having them kind of as a set array of values is interesting as well. Here we have a for loop, which goes 100 times. We're going to get a random color from our color array. We're going to create a solid color. And this actually looks accurate. We get a square plus i as the name. So it'll say square one, square two, square three, etc. The size is 100 by 100. Um, and they're each 10 seconds long. Our composition is also 10 seconds long at 29.97 FPS. And then it does a math random value. Looking at this, I think this should just work right out of the gate. So if I just copy the code, uh, launch my editor, I'm just going to call this uh, chat GPT script testing JSX. I'm going to go ahead and we're in uh, After Effects 2023 here. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it into that. And now, just like that, we have a script which creates 100 random colored squares throughout our composition. So right out of the box, that worked really well. There's obviously some other things we could do. You can see the undo group is not present, so we're not in, we're not able to undo a lot of this stuff. So what we'll do is say that looks great. Thanks, Chat GTP. And of course, you don't have to be nice to the machine. You can be as mean as you want. Just know that if anything ever happens in the future and they make a hit list of. Uh, all the people that were rude to the AI, the AI makes a hit list, not the people, the AI, if there's ever some kind of general intelligence. Uh, this is sci-fi talk, but also, who knows? Um, you'll be on that list if you are mean to it. Um, so we can say, that looks great, chat, GTP. Can you please add an undo group to the code? And so far, it's been pretty good. Like, usually when I ask it questions, it really understands like 90% of what I'm trying to achieve. If you are explicit and clear using technical terminology, sometimes you have to kind of give it a little bit of extra help. And one thing you are able to do is you're able to go in and edit and resubmit various parts that you uh, sent it. And you can also give it thumbs up and thumbs down on the parts it responds to, uh, to check sort of the quality. So in this case, it's not adding an undo group before the comp creation. So I can already see that's a problem. So we'll start typing. Can you please add the begin undo group before the add comp method? And we'll have to wait till it's done before we can submit it as you can see. 
and sometimes it does feel like it just goes on and just keeps talking so sometimes you have to just wait but now we're going to ask can you please add it before the ad comp and this is just sort of a basic way you can tell it to do simple things we could also tell it to completely rewrite our code which we're going to do in just a second so instead of maybe random squares we could try something challenging like can you give us random triangles random hexagons and can you make all the colors bright or maybe muted those are the kind of the two main things i want to try next so now we have the undo group before the random squares creation and before the composition perfect so I'll wait for this to go ahead and uh, finish processing here all right so all that code is there we can literally just copy and paste it in here not much of a difference but uh go ahead and save that um, we'll delete all the stuff we did here in After Effects and run it again. And this time, when we undo, we're going to get everything wiped clean, just perfect. Um, and one other thing I'm going to add here just for niceties, so we can see immediately, I'm going to say comp.openInViewer. Sometimes there's just code you can write easily yourself. Sometimes you want to ask the AI for help. And I should mention, whenever I say AI, it's technically not artificial intelligence but the colloquial term currently used and around all the hype of everything is ai despite the fact it's mostly just machine learning uh general intelligence is something much more complicated to define and uh, we're probably not quite there yet so we have our updated code here i'm going to copy it and one thing we can actually do is use our own code and tell it hey can you make modifications to this code so if i wanted to i could start a new chat and I'll have history of all my previous chats. So if I ever need to go check, what was this issue? How did I fix it? Or what was this uh, thing that it figured out for me? Let's go ahead and say, can you update my AE script? I don't know if it's going to understand AE script, but um, to randomly generate triangles instead of squares, please. So I'll just put the code right below there and see what it does. Certainly, here's the updated code that will create 100 randomly colored triangles instead of square layers. So we start off, we're just changing a few of the names instead of random squares, we're now random triangles. It's still using a color array, so I'm curious in my next question if it's going to be able to change that properly to randomize them to, say, a muted or a bright or something like that description of a color instead of just these uh, six or seven, maybe eight other colors it's predefined. So this time it's actually creating a shape layer instead of a solid. It's naming the layers to be triangles. And it's even creating a shape, creating vertices, and then adding that to our shape. I'm fairly confident this will work right out of the box, which normally actually for these kind of things, it doesn't. I will say, maybe for more creative design like this, this, will, this kind of stuff will work better. Um, but for things like, for example, I asked it, how do I read a file? It didn't know the proper uh, way to open files in Extend Script. So we'll go ahead and try and run this script, clear up our project. We'll run it. And just like that, we have a hundred random triangles, with random colors placed randomly around here. Again, we didn't even ask it to randomize the position. It just did that. Um, so that's awesome. Next, let's say, Instead of having a preset list of colors, can we make all the random colors a dark muted color? So we'll say certainly, here's updated code that will create 100 randomly colored dark muted triangle layers. Let's see how it does that. So in this case, it's randomizing the R, G, and B values from 0 to 128, which is basically from a low intensity value to a mid intensity value and that seems to be how it does it and then for each time it's going to take the random r g and b channels it generates value from 0 to 27 and put it into a color variable which we then use to fill our triangles so this is totally going to work i can tell right out of the box another cool thing i didn't mention is that it does add comments i don't know if it's copying these comments from somewhere if it's using the language model to create these comments it's very interesting how it's actually more organized than me in most cases. So we will go ahead and undo our After Effects setup, copy the code, run it. And in this case, it looks like we're getting really bright. And these are these are maxed out brightness, I can tell. 39, okay. 
So in this case, you can see we have a bit of an issue. I know what the issue is, but I want to see if chat GTP can guess it. The issue here is that our random RGB values are evaluated from between zero or zero and 127. But when we apply these values to uh, an After Effects property, they need to be float values between zero and one. So these really just need to be divided by 255 to make this happen. But I want to see if by describing my problem, it can figure out what's wrong. Everything is great, except my triangles are very bright and not dark muted colors. I apologize for the mistake. Here's updated code and let's see if it figures out to normalize our color values out to, to be a float color. Um, no, nah, in this case, it definitely didn't get it. It added 128, so now it's just gonna make it more bright. Um, so just to show you how this should be, each of these should be divided by 255, and that's gonna give us a more muted color and that's not blown out like we had there. So as you can see, there are some limitations. It does come across some issues sometimes. And I'm really trying to understand, are these issues coming up because this isn't as well documented, this particular thing I'm trying to accomplish? Um, because I wonder how many posts there are of people creating compositions or doing for loops and randomizing colors. There's gotta be a lot of examples, even outside of just scripting for After Effects. Um, but when you say more specific things like, how do I read a file or uh, uh, why is my image not normalized properly? It's gonna, it's not necessarily gonna have an intuitive understanding of uh, different bits per channel and how After Effects is set up. It might just be skimming code. So now we have fixed it manually. So one important thing to know is that if you're using ChatGTP to generate all of your code or to prototype code, it is important to test it and uh, have a bit of understanding already about whatever language you're doing. Because in this case, I noticed right away what code is working and what code was going to have some issues. Um, so that's pretty cool. We have a script that does that already. And what do we do next? Maybe we want to ask it uh, a brand new script or something to modify this one to make it more exciting. Let's go ahead and ask it, can you add some code to render this out? Um, I don't know if it's going to know about DC 23 having H.264 output. So let's just say, can you add some code to render out this composition? To render this composition to my desktop. Yeah, this is incorrect. Pretty much all of this is incorrect. New render queue item I haven't seen used. Maybe you can do it. Render settings that output module equals one. I have never seen that. Why would you set the output module to best settings here if you're doing it to the template here? Render settings to output file I don't believe is proper either. Creating a new file. It should be dot .file. Comp.renderQ.items.add is correct, but you're supposed to add a composition, not a render settings. Um, it does know app.begin suppress dialogues and app.end suppress dialogues, which is interesting. But it also thinks the way you render this is by saying render settings.render. Most of this code is wrong. I don't believe any of this would work. We can verify by going to the scripting guide. Okay, while we do have a render queue item, this isn't the way we should do it. We shouldn't be creating a new item. We can simply just add the composition ourselves. So as you can see, some cases, we're not going to get the results we want. ChatGTP does its best, but not very good. Likewise, if I said, how can I read... Let's say, how can I write to a text file on my desktop using an After Effects? This is something I asked it before. Perhaps it will give me a different result because I'm typing it differently. It says we can use the file and write method. That's actually correct. That's right. That's correct. Okay, that's correct. Um, now, how would I read that file later? Maybe it was the read file that gave an issue, or maybe I wasn't explicit enough in talking to ChatGTP. And let's see if it can read that file later. To read the text file that you wrote to your desktop using a script, you can use open read line. Okay, 
I guess uh, it does know. It knows how to do it. That's good to know. Um, while not end of file, a line is equal to read line. That's, that's totally right and accurate. So in conclusion, ChatGTP is a machine learning model that will basically allow you to have it prototype code, write essays, and all kinds of useful stuff. While there is a lot of arguments about the moral implications, the copyright, there's a lot of different trends and tools coming out uh, this year and last year that are in the same kind of gray field where we don't know what the future is going to hold. But in my opinion, as someone who very much enjoys technology and software, uh, this is something that's super cool. And I can give you a little breakdown of my experience using it so far in different uh, Adobe add-ons. I guess I should say this is mostly applying for After Effects because I haven't tried it in more niche things like Premiere and the like. But in scripting, it's pretty accurate. It does have some issues occasionally with things like rendering and file system stuff. Extensions, I haven't specifically had the opportunity to test it with. But plugins, After Effects plugins, I have been using it a lot to really stress it and prototype actual stuff. I've generated successful blur algorithms, um, creative chromatic aberration algorithms, uh, tint and saturation algorithms, which are quite simple, but I can even provide it with GPU code kernels specifically uh, from a CUDA file and it will interpret those and create them how I want. So I would say in terms of actual production ready code, this is a very big step in the right direction. Um, I don't think you can always just copy and paste the code it provides you and it's going to work. Most of the time I have to give it a few revisions and say, this is what's happening to my image. I don't know what's going on. Can you help me? And it will list out a few ideas of what might be the problem. Uh, there are other times, like the very first time I asked it in this tutorial, where it worked straight out of the box and even went the extra mile and did a few extra randomization things that I didn't even ask of it. So do use OpenAI's ChatGTP. This isn't an ad, it's just really cool. Um, but do also have a grain of salt when you're testing, test heavily, um, learn kind of how the AI understands and talks because it can get you closer to your answers a lot quicker. Um, and if you are gonna use it in production code, just of course, test, test, test. Um, but it is a very useful tool for prototyping, understanding concepts that you don't know, and uh, even getting pseudocode and fully working code in just a matter of seconds. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you enjoy the newer style that I'm doing with my videos, trying to professionalize and improve all the quality. Uh, you can check out the link to the code down below where you can follow us on GitHub, follow us on Instagram, follow us on everything else, and subscribe and become a member of the channel if you would like. But that's going to conclude the video, and we will see you next time.